Ever thought about the secret sauce behind a top-notch race? It's the race committee, the unsung heroes. They're the pulse of any event making the magic happen. From laying out the course to making the big calls, these wizards of the race make sure every event is a blast. So hop on board and join the club of these race maestros. Your thrilling adventure into the world of race committee starts here. Welcome, welcome. If you're attending the third of our series of, of race training sessions, I'm going to further introduce other guests, our Commodore Post Letters here. Bill, thank you very much. Uh, Aaron Vandermaiden, then up here and the young lady who put all this together. I've been talking about it for a year and she probably put it together. Only because I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, by the way, she's leaving town tomorrow. It's a nice birthday. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> tomorrow? This, this, yeah, stuff, this is really here. This, is this third really session, we're going to focus on oh my gosh. how to set up a race course, uh, uh, a lot of the details involved, and we have the race course specialist. Epic Lambert. More or less. Yeah. <laughs> Who has uh, been uh, the experience of about 200, 250. Now you're right there. Just seems like. Epic is all yours. All right, thank you very much, Arch. Um, oh, yeah. Again. Really? There you go. This is the uh, third series that uh, Karen has put together. The first one, of course, was uh, more or less um, Race Committee 101, just kind of going over the basics uh, of uh, what's required for the Race Committee. Hopefully, it didn't scare too many people away. The second one was, uh, I wasn't there for that one, the second one, but that's uh, more on flags, starting sequences and other flags that you see on the race course. Uh, flags are very important. Um, uh, anything audible on the race course is strictly a uh, luxury. Uh, uh, everything is run by flags uh, for good reason. For years, I raced against, and then he raced with me, a deaf sailor, Aaron Bremer, maybe some of you know him from Jacksonville. So the flags are meant to uh, tell uh, the story that's going on on the race course. Again, anything audible is just a luxury. So uh, flags are very important. Today, we're going to go over uh, the, the things you want to consider when you're going to set up a race course, and then how I set up a race course. Um, and then I think the next one is going to be pretty important, actually executing a regatta from the registration to the skipper's meeting to what we're actually getting on the boat and getting the boats out on the water. So this is a, a three of part, uh, three or four parts. U.S. Sailing has something they call it SOARS, S-O-A-R-S. It's an acronym for Sailing Officials Automated Reporting System. And if you're a U.S. Sailing uh, official, like as I am, you report all of your regattas to uh, U.S. Sailing and they keep a record of all this for you. It's very, very nice. When I was moving from Jacksonville to come down here, I uh, took the um, uh, club race uh, cl club race officer class up in Jacksonville. I didn't really do too much race to big work. I was more of our uh, regatta chairman, 14 years as a regatta chairman up there, and we hosted some very big regattas up there, especially uh, Melgus Nationals, they're North American, J24 North American, a lot of big regattas up there, and I ran those things. I was never on the race committee, but I uh, went on the race committee boat, and I uh, watched what they were doing, and I was listening to what they were doing, and spent, you know, set marks for them, but the hall flag, whatever I needed to do. So I got a feel for uh, what I thought they were doing right, and I got a feel for what uh, I would do different if I was going to do that sort of stuff. So um, I come uh, from the race committee side, from the from a, a sailor and a racer's uh, point of view. So I took the uh, the club racing thing, and my first regatta that I did was on uh, September 27th in Jacksonville. My first uh, regatta here in Melbourne was on April 26, 2009. And since then, I've compiled 122, uh, 164 total regattas that are on these lists here, 122 that are MYC regattas only, and 42 non-MYC regattas where I travel. I say this because, not to uh, blow smoke up your ass, but the thing is, is that I'm going to show you, uh, explain to you how I do it. There's a lot of different ways to do this, and there's other ways that you might want to do that. Uh, prefer to come downwind, where I like to go upwind, uh, come from the left, where I like to come from the right. So there's no right way and wrong way to set marks and to set a course, <clears throat> as long as you have a strategy. And at the end of the day, you have a nice square course. So um, that's the thing I want to emphasize, that this is the way I do it, not the way that um, the U.S. Sailing necessarily says you have to do it. But uh, it's worked well for me in the, in the past, and. Uh, I'd just like to impart a little bit of this knowledge with you. 
So as you're coming up to the race course, race day, you know, uh, on a Saturday, it's a Saturday race, you know, I'm looking at the weather virtually every day to see what's going on, what the wind direction is going to be, what the forecast is going to be, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really important when you come in on race day that you've got some, some sort of figure, uh, figure out what the weather is in relation to the wind direction. Um, is there rain in the forecast? Is there thunderstorms in the forecast? Uh, wind direction, uh, that sort of wind velocity, of course, is very important. So you got to feel for what the weather is going to be doing when you go out there. Then you got to, of course, figure out, you know, who are we working with today? Is it one design small boats single fleet? So one design small boats multiple fleets? So one design multiple fleets plus multi hulls? Is it one design with um, a big boat, uh, a one design like a J24 or the Morgan 24 class? So um, it's, uh, you know, things like that will come into your decision making process as well. So you're starting to calculate all this thing. You know, are we going to be, is it a perf regatta? Is it perf A or perf B? Are we going to go distance? Are we going to do short races? You know, what does the o uh, organizing authority have for us in mind? Are we going to be doing multiple races? Uh, is it one day or two day, multiple races, three or four races? What time do they want us to get in in the afternoon? Are there awards that night? You know, it affects what time we want to be getting in. So a lot of that stuff, uh, of course, needs to be considered even before you get out on the water. And then, of course, you want to know who you're working with. Who are my recorders? Very, very important. Who are my uh, scorers? Do I have mark set boats out there? One mark set boat to help me, two mark set boats, no mark set boats. So all that stuff is in your mind before you get on the water as well. So, um, you know, all that stuff is important. You know, what is the signal boat? Well, who are the mark? How many people are on the signal boat that we get? You know, you know that before you leave. My recorders and my scores. How many mark set boats? How many people are on the mark set boats? That will affect how I set the course up, how long the course will be set up, how uh, complicated or how simple I have to make it in order to uh, you know, satisfy the fleet. So all this stuff needs to be calculated before you go out there. So you have some sort of game plan and all these inputs are you know, going through your mind and you have a game plan before you leave the uh, docks to go out on the water. So all that's you know, pretty important stuff. Now setting up the race course, we're gonna go over two different ways. First of all, the one design guys because they have a way that they set up the course and how they like it. And then on the other side, we're going to talk about how we set up the perf course, which is a, you know, is a work in progress. Where there's no really set way to do that. There's a way I do it, and I'm going to show you how we do that stuff. So if we're going to be doing up the uh, very important. So when you're setting up a, oh, you know what I forgot to do? Gosh darn it. I killed so much office time today putting these together. <laughs> and these are just basic course sheets that we've been using for years and years here. Uh, one of the great one of the great things that helps me a lot. Do we have enough of them? Is that Art Crocker? He has a program where he can he puts these things together. And I tell him exactly what I'm looking for, and he puts these uh, course diagrams together, and it really, really helps me, so uh, you get it exactly the way you want it. So, uh, like I said, there's two ways to set the course, depending on what fleet we are. With one design, it's a pretty basic course. You, go ahead. It's about as basic as the first sheet, which is a simple weather leg, yeah. a lure leg, and a start and finish leg. One thing that's common to every single race course that we set up, one design small boats, one design multi one design per A, per B, is that the first leg is always as very close as you can get going straight to weather. And the reason why that's always important for you to say is the only uh, point of sail you, get, you can't sail to. You can't go directly to the wind. So they always, 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 100% of the time, I shouldn't say that, 90 to 8% of the time, you're going to have the first mark is going to be directly to weather. So it's really important that the race committee is setting that course to weather. Now, there's a couple different ways you can set that to weather. You can set the weather mark first and then set the start finish line. And that's what we do mostly for one design racing because the weather mark isn't that far away. On big boats where we have a mile longer leg, we've had races where you can't see. I can't see the weather set guys. They can't see me because it's so far, especially in big weather. So we're working back bearings and we're and we're uh, doing it so we're setting the pin first and then we set the weather mark so that's really up to the PRO depending on the weather conditions 
But the, so your basic, most basic, H1, is a one design. This would be more, most common with small boats. And it's just a, simply a, a, a weather leg. We set a weather leg as close to weather as we could. We come back and set the start finish line based on the 90 degrees off that. And then we probably set that uh, leeward mark either right at the, before the start. If it's only one fleet, maybe after the start it takes off. How do I know what that is? So I've got a tool here. So once I can get my weather guy, I got my weather guys up there. They're giving me we, uh, re, uh, wind readings up there. This is very important uh, that they do that. We're down there constantly taking weather, shooting the weather, shooting the weather, trying to get ourselves a good number. A good number means a magnetic uh, compass number. The wind moves around. It moves around constantly. It drives me nuts. <laughs> So, you're, so, you get a, so we're taking wind readings, 225, 230, 230. We find out how far it's gone to the right, how far it's gone to the left over a five or 10 minute period. And uh, we try to find uh, the average. And it's really hard to get the uh, weather mark in there. If I'm, if I'm fortunate enough to have two marks at boats, one at the weather end and one at the leeward end, then I don't drop that weather mark until 15 minutes before we're gonna go into the sequence, just waiting to the last second before I can set that weather mark, and if I have the luxury of having a lured set mark. So um, the numbers are, are very important and they, and they talk. So uh, here we go. So this one, so page number one, we're talking one design, probably a single fleet, maybe two fleets, very similar to what you'd see on a small boat Sunday. Now you can have a lured mark or you can put your hands over the lured mark and often we'll use one and the start finish pin is the lured mark, which you can do as well. It, it is lured of the weather mark, so you have a little bit of flexibility here. But then you notice up there in the course, it says W1, which is windward one, which is one uh, weather, one finish. <coughs> We're gonna do two courses, it's weather, one, two, one finish, so it's pretty easy to understand. So that is a pretty basic windward lured course. On page two though, one thing is you're, as a race committee, the PRO especially, is that you're keeping track of the wind. And say we have a situation now where the wind's 15, 18 miles an hour, but it's supposed to increase through the day, 20 miles an hour or decrease. So what we do then when it starts getting a little sporty out there, we have the option of putting the, what we call a reaching mark out there. So instead of doing when we're lures, we're actually doing a triangle. So, so if, if you notice the wind at the, uh, up at the top of the thing, our, our course is, it allows me to go W1, of course, or W1 is one, you know, windward, one, and finish. So we don't have to use that. And uh, sometimes we're being deployed, but I have it on the race course with me, because a lot of times the wind builds during the day, I'm seeing a lot of boats capsize, so now I'm getting nervous out there, so I said, okay, we're gonna get the reaching mark out. It's a much safer course for small boats to put the reaching mark out there. So instead of W1 or W2, you can see the course T, T for triangle, would be one, two, three, and finish. And you're finishing downwind. So this is one of the reaching course when the weather starts getting sporty, when I start seeing a lot of boats capsizing. Again, who's my fleet out there? I got a, a, a mature laser and a sunfish fleet. I may not need that. I've got younger sailors out there. Um, less experienced sailors out there in order to keep them safer i might be thinking about going to the reaching mark and that's what it gets into know you know who you're working with know your fleet know what their experience is and if you don't know ask so depending on what you do on the reaching market depend of course on the weather and what fleets i have out there and uh, factors such as that so number two is a basically again one design course with the option of putting a reaching mark out there the distances between marks I'm sorry? How do you decide the distances between marks? Um, well, again, and that's a good question. The, again, and that goes back to who sailing. We have a mature fleet. We've only got eight to ten knots of breeze. Coat, beautiful sunny day. We're going to put a mark that's a little bit farther out there because we're going to have a great day. We want to sail. If it's 40 and up there, I'm going to maybe shorten that weather mark so they don't have to be as far because it's very, you know, it's physically demanding to do that. The reaching coming down, they're holding on for our dear life finishing that way. So then again, that's something that you, the more you're out there and the more races you do, the better feel you get for that. There's nothing in the book that tells you when to do that. You just know. And you're watching what's going on, race one, we're gonna make some adjustments in race two, we're gonna make some adjustments, maybe the wind's dying, I'm gonna get rid of the reaching mark. 
So you're getting, just getting a feel. You just kind of get a feel for that, and you only get a feel by doing it. So you notice on page two, we have downwind finish. On page three, this is something I like to use. I don't know if I invented it or not. But when you have a lot of fleets, three, you know, so you have, we have the lasers, we've got the radios, we've got the 47s, we've got the 420s, we might have the sunfish out there. What's the difference between two and three is the finish line. One thing about finishing downwind is that when they're finishing downwind and they're running, the sail is almost a beam of the boat. It's really hard to uh, read that number. And there's nothing worse than having 10 boats start and you only finish eight. Because you go, where are the other two boats? And that leads to colorful language on land when you get in, and you want to avoid that if you can. So uh, what I like to do when I have uh, several fleets, especially when they're out there and they might be passing each other, and, uh, and uh, with several fleets, you have a lot of boats, maybe 20, 25, 30 boats total, a lot of three or four fleets. I like to put an offset. So we start straight to weather again, always mark one. You swear to the uh, square to the start line, and it's directly the weather. But instead, if we can do one, three, finish, two laps, we can do the offset. But the big thing here is about uh, two big things to consider on this mark three is that mark three always has to be honored. Because there's no scenario where you can go mark mark one and go to the finish line. So no, of course, W1, W2, T1, it's always one, three is always your last mark to finish. But we're doing an offset finish. And the great thing about that is when you come around three and they're going for that, that sail is right there. It's just, a, it's just a, a, a slightly broad reach, sometimes a beam reach. And it's easy to get the numbers and you can see really uh, tight, close finishes. And it makes it a lot easier on the race committee and the scorers and the recorders and everybody else. So when I have bigger fleets, multi-fleets, multiple tight post fleets, I um, like to go to what we call, on page three, the offset finishing mark. Which is great, I love it. Of course, we do a lot of uh, uh, page four. We do a lot of Opti work here. Uh, we have a lot of Opti sailors. We post a couple of youthful guys every year. The Yachtis, they like what they call a trapezoid course, which is a little, set up a little bit different. Not that much different, but it's three, you know, four marks total, an offset finishing mark. And again, it gets back to, okay, who am I working with? I'm working with the Opti fleet. Uh, okay, I'll be gold and silver, or maybe green, something along those lines. So you can put the green guys on course X, which is only one lap. You can put the more experienced guys on course Z, which is two laps. What we do, Karen, you'll tell them right now, and Jim, we don't do race committee, we do race management. We manage the course, we manage who we're working with, and we manipulate everything to give the best results and the best experience to the sailors. So if you have a green fleet, green fleet means they're the very most inexperienced sailors, but they're maybe their first regatta ever. But the other fleets, you know, they're they've been around for a long time, so you know we can put it. There's nothing that says you have to put everyone on the same course. That's why everyone in the sheets have multiple courses that allow us to manage the race course. Some we can put on one lap, the other ones we can put on two laps. Some we can put on uh, windward. You can put the other ones on a triangle. You know, you're managing the race course, so that's why you like to give yourself options as many options as you can. So. Um, so here's our Optimus course here, Opti course, uh, gold and silver. It's a trapezoid type course. These are our one design courses. Number five, you know, we do one design. Yes, sir. Uh, are these the colors of the mark? Yeah, let me, that's a very good question. Let me, and I have this in my notes. Your notes on page one, from uh, page one on. I always like to have a different color for the start finish line than I do for the other marks. Always a different, that can be white, that can be yellow, but if you're using orange marks out there, I always like to have the start and finish line a different color, just so it differentiates itself from the marks on the course. Um, if you're using yellow marks, which we sometimes do for the windward and lured marks, you can have an orange mark down there or a white mark, uh, mark down there. Can I have it in my notes? Where is that? Huh. Bad notes. <laughs> yeah, no different color start, <laughs> no different color start part from the others. So we always like to use that, uh, a different, on this one here, generally, like I said, generally we'll set that before the race starts, but sometimes we can do it after you start going to win. I have my lure mark come up there and set that, so that's not set in stone. Reaching mark, of course, with high winds, we went over that. 
Mark three uh, with page three, of course, when you're using that and the, and the offset finish mark, mark three is always a mark of the course. Yes, ma'am. Um, on the Aki course, you yes. said that sometimes you have them doing one lap and the other gold or silver doing like two laps. Different course? Do they race at the same time on different courses? Well, uh, they're, they're racing the same course for sure. But I mean, like, they might have different starts. Oh, okay. So, I'm just wondering, for the kids' clarification, would they be, like, starting, like, on the course at the same time, even if they're starting at different times? Because that's a choice. And they're all simultaneously sailing, yeah. right? But you just have to read your course board as the kid. You'd be like, I'm doing a one. I'm just asking because eight-year-olds typically so, yeah. be like, I'm right. following that guy. Right. Uh, so yeah. that's, and you're right. I'm just curious. I it's an option. Like, you are not going to have to do that. Sometimes you have two different courses. So um, you're right. We keep it as simple as we can for that. You want to make it as simple as you can for the students. So I, just, I meant that it as an option. Um, sometimes uh, the uh, fleets are waiting for those green guys to get in a long time mm -hmm. in, in the effort to maybe forget. And the next one, where we actually start going into executing a race, yeah. we'll get into it then. But uh, on the stern of the signal boat, we put the course designation. On the, now, we probably covered that at the skipper's meeting, which we'll go over the next one. But we'd say, Green Fleet, you're going to be sailing X. Coach, talk to him about what X is. Uh, silver to gold, or you're probably going to be sailing Z. Coach, make sure they understand what that is. And uh, anyone has any problems with that, come up and talk to me, and we'll talk, talk about that. So, it's not, not that we do it. Dave Noble, he takes care of all, most of the time, our opties is under the auspices of uh, past Commodore yeah. Noble. I'm not sure what he does as far as that goes. You keep everybody on the same course. Go Pretty much so maybe one less lap. One less, yeah, that's what I mean. You start them at the same time? You start them all at the same time, or is there a green? My option. Yeah. 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 Depends on the number of kids. Yeah. Yeah. And this, this, is, this is an aside of Seattle thing, but um, I recently did a uh, race committee for the Junior Olympics there, and we, in August, it wasn't that long, but we did lots of talking on the loudspeaker. So after the first fleet took off, and maybe they're doing the two laps, and like, okay, you know, white fleet, you're remember, you're going twice. Remember, and like on the bullhorn, specifically telling them to keep going. I did regard up in Jacksonville. We had 110 options wow. on three different fleets, but oh, wow. not two different races. <laughs> Under one design, page five. This would be something we'd have probably for. Um, we, we did have something like this for we had the Sunfish Regionals, 35 of them, something uh, larger fleets, uh, J24s, and we have the districts, and we have the uh, uh, midwinters, of course, we have 30 or 40 boats. What we're doing up at the weather end, you can see we're having a weather mark and an offset mark. And at the lured end, we have gates. Because when you have that many boats, you can't have everyone going around the same lured mark, and they just get a big pinwheel, and get a lot more colorful language. So we give them the option of going through gates. So this would be something, and, and, and as rookies or as, as newbies, we would never have you do this when we'd have you help you. But it just shows another way of one design courses with larger fleets. And on, <laughs> and on the second page five, now that I see that. Uh, <laughs> you just talk about the finish line on the first page. Yeah, the finish line when we do that. Yeah, you put that mark here just to narrow the quote. The so that's a very good question again. Martha, so you can see at the start line on, court, on the first page five, we have a yellow mark that starts it, which is a different color than the orange marks that are on the course. Generally, when you have a large fleet, you have to have a large line. So instead of having my mark set guys move that weather mark, uh, that start mark every time, you don't want a huge finish line. You can't see down there, and people are especially closer to shoot. So you notice I've got a small hippity hop. And what I'll do is, and I'll explain that at the skipper's meeting, and it's in the SI, is that the fit star line is between the, mark set, uh, the signal boat and the yellow uh, ball. That's the star line. And the finish line is between that boat and that small hippity hop. So after the boat's fleets take off, generally after they go through the gates the last time, I'll come in there and I'll set the finish line. So it's a lot closer to the signal boat. Let's just get the numbers a lot easier. They don't need that whole line to finish anyway. Mm -hmm. And then when they've all finished, I just pick up that ball and the line's still ready to go. Unless, of course, we move things around. But, but that's, that's the reasoning behind the finish line uh, scenario on uh, the first page line. Mm -hmm. The yellow thing, so we, we set a finish line that's a little bit different than the start line. We make sure it's a different figure. You know, these are tetrahedrons, it's an orange ball. We could have you know, anything we want. But that's, uh, 
and generally between one and one A, that's generally four boat lines. So if you have a J24, that's you know, eight feet. If you have a sunfish, that's 45 feet or something along those lines. So that's the distance between those two. We, small boat regatta, the last couple of years, we've had uh, the uh, Hobie Waves join us, which is a multi hole boat, which is a lot faster than some of our uh, smaller boats. So if you notice here on this one, I got a little creative myself. I have two weather marks. I have two weather marks. One's orange and one's yellow. And what I do is I'll have on my course board the sunfish lasers of 420s. You're using course W1. And then I make the Hobies go to W2, which is a little bit longer. They're a little bit faster boat. They're still going to go do the lure then and come back around. But So I have the option here. Again, we like options. But I can actually have two weather marks, and I've done this many times. We have an orange W1 for a, a fleet that's not as fast as a W2 is a fleet that's going to this one. I make the distances different, so it takes them longer to get up there. They're finishing closer to each other. We get the next race going in a timely manner. So those are, um, and, and number six is kind of the same thing as we did the other one. Just shows that the number of lakes are close to have a signal boat. If the gate's missing, that's what you do if the gate's missing. You know, it allows us to change the angle without calling a change of course. So that is a, you know, Basically, do what we saw on the page. So, one design, you know, it, it, there's a lot of options, a lot of different ways depending on the classes. We do a lot of one design racing here at this club. Uh, we've done sunfish regionals, we've done 75 boat sunfish <laughs> classes. We've had the lasers come through here, we've had those uh, uh, multi holes come through here. Uh, 420 class is just growing and growing every every season. We get more and more of them coming in. So, one design is really important. You'll probably have to see some one design racing. So. Um, it's important to know that that's mostly just they like windward lures, really good, a good uh, weather leg, good square line, and then just get those guys started and let them go sailing. So that's a, it's, it's fun to watch. So that's one design racing. And that's pretty much by the book. Now we're going to talk about PHRF racing, which is not by the book, especially here. We have a small, relatively small racing area, unlike all galley, where they can race well uh, west of the ICW. We can't get even near the west shore here because of the shallows and, the, and all the shoals out there. So what Arthur has done such a great job, nothing, nothing's changed, but really much different has changed, except for the fact that how I do it, how I do it, is that this is this. Is this. this is the um, uh, course of, 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 the, um, of the river. We've got red six, we've got green seven, we've got green nine, which are all marks of our course. And of course, yellow A and yellow B, which are rum race marks too. Those are all, I never use this mark because it's shell over here, and I don't some people. So what, so how do I do it? How do we do that, Pat? So here's how I do that. First of all, I want to say one thing. I probably was remiss. When I'm setting, whenever my guy set the star line, just say you reach from this direction here. And I have the boat here. They're going up this way. So I say, you know, I find say, hey guys, it's showtime. We're going to set the weather marks. So what I like them to do is I like them to come over here on the right side of the boat, downwind, you get a, a fairly good distance, you know, maybe six or six boat lengths of the way, and then come this way. And then when I like the distance, have them come up to weather. I don't want them coming this way because when you come to weather, there's not that much room to make adjustments. So if they're down here, they're coming up to weather, I'm saying, oh, maybe they need to stretch that out. So now they can come out this way as they're coming up. Or, well, that's long enough for flag right here. And as they come up and I'm calling that, and what they're doing, hopefully, is they've got the mark stretched out, the full length of, of the cord stretched out, and all they're doing is holding the anchor. And as they come up and I'm, I'm, I'm reading, I'm reading it, and the boat goes past my uh, mark, and then when the, and when the mark is on my mark, you know, when the mark is on my compass, I tell them to drop that there, and that will move, that'll move the mark up about six or eight feet. Careful. So I have to come below the boat, I have to come down this way, and I say, go to weather. Okay, I like it. Uh, let's, uh, let's tighten this up a little bit, or, or let's, do some, you know, let's get a little bit farther so they go up, and then I call the line, and then they drop the mark. So, now, you might want to come this way and drop the mark. I don't, I don't know. And then we've dropped the mark a bunch of times. And, okay, mark's down, and we've you know, got a good square line between the, the mark and that stuff. We've dropped it before. 
And I'll say, gosh damn it, Art, why'd you drop it there? It's not where I wanted it. And of course, I gave him the wrong, wrong time to drop it. And we sometimes have to reset that thing too, and there's no set way to do that. You know, sometimes grab it, I'll just say, he's got to come down another up, up, a, up a couple lengths, or down a couple of lengths. So, um, that, that, so that generally, that's how I set the weather mark. It's coming way behind the boat, coming straight line across, and then going straight to weather. And then when I'm watching them go to weather, I say, okay, I like my distance. Uh, that's a little close than I thought. Let's put a little a left in, or that's good, or that line's too long. Let's put a little bit of right in. And the reason, and so they've got a good, you know, 10 boat length, eight boat lines to make that correction out there. When they're setting the weather mark for me, again, there's no set way to do that either. They're just up there, and I'm, uh, they're taking wind readings the entire time. You know, we're talking about perf. They're taking wind readings the entire time, and tell me what the weather they're seeing up there is. Uh, Jim and I are uh, taking uh, weather readings down at our end. And how do we do that? We do it two different ways. <coughs> Something I put together, I call it the CWI. This is the continuous wind indicator, since everything needs to be an acronym. And we put that in the front of the boat. And this is constantly, you know, continually following the weather. So when we don't have our gun out, uh, we can still generally follow the weather with the CWI, which is up all the time. And of course, I, I don't know my design this, but anyway, I've been using this for years. I've made a half dozen of them for people, but you'll see me up on the darn ball. We, you know, we're going this way, and you go this way, and you go this way until the until the you know until the thread is directly into weather, and then you look down, and that's what your compass reading is. If you buy these things and a couple of rum drinks, I'll make you this. I've made a couple of them before. Mark just brought me another one. I made her one. So this thing is great. So you so you're going like this till it comes this way. And you know, okay, what's that number? Okay, that number is 270. You go over here to 270. What's 270 minus 90 is 180. You know, so you, of course it's straight south, so 180. So then I go over this way, 180. And when you're looking this way, this should be going straight out this way, because of course it's this way. This, this look at this way, you might be off. Look at this way, you might be off. So it's a great little instrument. Very easy to do, but I'm a numbers guy. I'm a numbers guy. Once I get the weather mark where I like that number, We'll finally uh, uh, settle on a number. It's moving around. We got to get this. We got to go. So we'll settle on a number. We'll put the. Uh, okay, drop that bar. Okay, what's that number? Once we get that number, then move. That's 90 degrees this way. This is uh, 180 degrees that way. And then you know. Then now we're just setting up the course the way we like to do that. So for per the big thing is I've got to figure out what the wind is going to be doing. Does anybody have a weather app? What's the wind going to be on Saturday for the wall race? We'll just do something in real time. And I'll show you what I like to do. I think I think it's going to be south southeast. Saturday. Saturday at two o'clock. Here's the thing I like to do when, it, when the wind is any, it's the way I like to do it again. When the wind is anything from north ish, this is north, so just a little slightly uh, west of north to almost south. The big thing I like to do when you start a fleet, you've got to go to weather. And when I like to do it, I want to make sure they finish going to weather. So if we got a 135, I'm thinking about, so what I always like to do is that no matter what the wind is like this way, I like to have the I like to have seven, I use seven as my last mark. So if the wind is this way, say we have a north wind, something like that, I would set my weather mark there and position, the big thing is Jim will tell you, the first thing you have to do when you go out there is you have to position the boat. You gotta position the signal boat and uh, because that's where everything's gonna go after that. And it's a function of two things, what the wind is doing at that time and what the forecast is expected to do. So at 1000, it's 130 and 15. At 1300, it's 130 and 11. All right. But getting back to what I was saying, thank you. What I'm getting back to saying is that, so, so, if we, so the wind say, well, it's going north, it's supposed to go this way, or maybe it's supposed to go, you know, so depending on what the wind is supposed to do that day, 
you got to kind of split the difference with the, the symbol because the symbol is hard to move. Right. So, so, so with a one three five wind. So we know the wind is going to be somewhere this way. So I, what I would do is I, I position the boat so when the weather mark is here, I look behind me and I've got seven behind me. I've got a leeward mark. If the wind is draped east, I position it this way. So seven is directly on my six o'clock. It's, it's this way. I said just so. Now here's the weather mark, and here's the leeward mark, and, and so now I've got a straight line here. So say it's this way. So you got it going this way, and it's this way. So we have a, a weather mark. So we have a weather mark. And after that, it's really no more complicated than setting a course. What I'd like to do is I'd like to have at least a couple of weather legs. I like a couple of reaching legs, and I like a couple of downwind legs. Now I know the Spinner guys always bitch because there's not enough downwind work. Cruiser guys always bitch because there's too much downwind work. But I can make sure that all the points of sail are taken care of. So I'd be going on there and say, okay, we got this course here today. Not the scale. What, what, what do we use for a course? Well, we can go weather to four. We can go over to nine. We can go to seven. Go back to eight. Go back to seven. And so when we come around seven, we can always go to weather to finish. We can go the weather, we can take it up to A, we can take A over to six, six to seven, to finish. You know, so you're me, so you're so that that's weather, that's downwind, that's a reach, that's a re that's the weather. So there's no set way I do it. I make it up while we're out there based on what we're doing in the marks we have. Straight east breeze? Now I've got lots of options. I'll go this way, I'll go up to six, go to seven, maybe over to B. Maybe back to six, to seven, always seven is the last mark. Round seven and finish. Round seven and the finish. So everything revolves around the straight line between the boat, the weather mark, and seven. So that's always a straight line. So you're going to weather this way, and you're going to weather to finish. So you can't go there. You got to tack, tack, tack. You know, now, you're, now you have options. Now you have options. So anything from this way to this way, I get to use seven. North or something like that. So I, I try to I try to set my weather mark. So I'm looking behind before I put this anchor down, before I put the anchor down on this, I'm already looking to see where the weather mark is, so I can make sure I can position. And sometimes it's not right. Sometimes it'll be this way, and it's a little bit, it's not straight up for me. It's an inexact sign, trust me. So that's what I think, that's my thinking when I'm setting a perf course. Now I might send A on two extra legs than B, and I often do that because we've got a couple of slow boats in B. They're bigger boats, excuse me, bigger boats. They're slower boats. They take a little time. So I might, I might send here, here, and send the A's on a little bit longer course, and B maybe two legs less. So they're all starting to finish at the same time. And how are you thinking of that? So the first race, we're going to take this course here. I'm, I'm figuring out how long this course is taking. You know, okay, this took 35 minutes. I'd like a 40 minute course. Okay, we'll add a leg or two. The wind's not very hard today, very blowing very hard. We don't need all those extra legs. You know, you want to get about a 35 to 40 minute race when you're doing multiple races in that day. So if the wind's not blowing that much, we may not be as long a course. You got a beautiful breeze, we'll get them out there and sail, but it'll still be a 40 to 45 minute race. How does the boat? Do the boats just come up to the race committee boats to find out how you change the course? Yes, that'll be in the that'll be in the next discussion. But that'll be uh, so we we post that for the first race at the skippers meeting, and then if I was going to change that course, add legs or shorten term, uh, L flag, come with the tail, note the new course change, and that'll be on the stern of the boat. So this would be our start line and finish line right here, something like that. This would be our weather leg. And they would, Take off this way. Round, I'd, I'd, it'd be great for six to seven to B, back to six, seven finish. Well, that took 35 minutes. That's not bad. But now B, but now okay. But uh, but but that's a little quicker. I go B, you know six, seven, A, back to seven to finish. Where I make and I make B just go seven to finish. They don't have to go to A. So they're doing two less legs and they're finishing about the same time. Management. 
race management. Yes, sir. Uh, when you're setting the weather mark, do you take into account the changing uh, afternoon sea breeze? Of course we do. As a matter of fact, so once we start, once you start, the day's not over for the signal boat. We're watching the wind the entire race. I've had my weather set guys tell me what they like. wake up, tell me what the weather's like up there. If you guys don't mind. Uh, okay, and so we're watching, and there'll be races, we'll do three races a day, we have to move the weather mark every race. Mm -hmm. So we're moving, so this is, so the wind's moving this way, we're having to move this this way, we're having to move this this way, so you're always moving okay. the wind. It's always moving the wind. Sometimes it'll come back, now you gotta come back this way, so um, I rarely change course in the middle of the race. Perf racing, we're perf racing, we don't do that stuff. So. But just for champions you do. For sure, oh yeah, J24 tends to do it all the time. <laughs> so, 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 we're getting a feel for this now. We're starting to get a feel. So, when we're doing anything north to south, something like that, <coughs> we like seven. Seven's close to here. It's right in the middle of the river. I got a lot of options. I got a lot of options. Well, Pat, that's really nice. Well, that is if we have a northwest wind or a southwest wind. That is a son of a bitch. <laughs> because I can't use, obviously, I can't use seven anymore. Can't use seven anymore, but I still have to finish the weather. So this is what we do do, not what we think we're doing. So we have a northwest breeze, something along these lines, along these lines, this way, something like that. So now what I'm doing is I'm coming over this way. Jim and I come over this way. I'm trying to figure out where we're going to put our boat. We're going to try to figure out where we're going to put our boat. If we put it here, if the wind goes to the left, we still have room. If the wind goes to the right, we still have room. If we get too far over this way and the wind goes to the left, now I'm running out a river. You know, we're like, hey, we would reset my mark over this way. So, so we're really trying to figure out where we're going to put the boat. And once we, you know, and the wind, of course, is going this way all the way down the river, not just right there. So now we're figuring, okay, we're going to, okay, we like this. So if the wind goes to the right, we've got room. If the wind goes to the left, we still have room to move the bark without having to move the boat. So now we're going, okay, we're going to get a, so we think that the weather is close to this. Well, what do we do now? Well, we still have, especially when I have a mark set boat, I just put another mark in. I just put another mark in. Look how Baker's just all set. Yeah. yeah. So now I've got, instead of having a natural mark, I have a mark that I put in myself. And now we're doing the same damn thing. We're going to weather. We're going to nine. We're going to A. We're going to six. We're going down to lure, and we're finishing. It's a course. It's fun. Fun course. You got upwind. You got downwind. You got two reaching lakes. All the points of sail. You know, like that. Okay, we're gonna go up here. We're gonna go down to nine. We're gonna come over to A. We're gonna come over to seven. We're gonna come over here to lure, and we're gonna finish. It works. Two weather lakes, a reaching lake, a dot spinnaker lake. Make sure the spinnaker boys are not gonna. Put my ass at the bar when you it. <laughs> and it works. It takes an extra mark. It really helps when you have a couple of mark set boats out there with you. Yes, sir. So that the boat's coming down and the ones that are finishing up with, which would pack up, would you put an offset mark down there to keep keep it safe? No. I wouldn't. But in my SI, the start line, the finish line is always closed, except for starting and finishing. Oh. You can never go from six to lure and go through the start line, finish line. Start line and finish line is always closed except for starting and finish line. We got a straight west wind. I hate them, but we do. Fine. No way. I can come all the way back to here, put my lure mark here. You know, generally this is a short, short lane. Maybe two tacks. We go to weather, we go to nine, we come over to B, we go over to six, you know, we go back to seven, lure, finish. Something like that. You know, if I'm not in a good mood, <laughs> I put my longer legs and we're out there for a long time. Uh, B, I put a little shorter leg because we, you know, we know there's a couple boats that they love sailing and they're enthusiastic. They'll be out there tomorrow for the amount of water on Friday, I should say. But uh, we can't wait all day. You know, I, mean, I appreciate you wanting to sail and out there sailing with your crew, but we can't hold up 12 boats when we go out there. So I, I, sometimes I'll finish it in place. There's other things we can do. We can discuss that for the next day. So anytime we have wet anything from here down this way, I'm looking at two marks now, but always to weather. And that is, so this, to weather, 
And this and this here, square to weather, uh, is the most important thing. If you get, and it happens with the shift, and we'll talk about what you do when you have a shift in the start. Well, if you got all the boats, one big mistake that the race committee makes, especially new guys, they're sitting on the bow of the boat. Yeah. They're sitting on the bow of the boat, and they've got the thing out in front of them like this, and they're going, okay, the wind's right there. And they put the mark right on the bow. Well, look at how yeah. favored this mm -hmm. side of the course is. Right. You start down here, you probably get in a four boat lengths, three boat lengths, and you've only just started. So one of the, the work is that you're standing on the bow of the boat, whatever this is, 270, you make this a, um, you know, 180, 480. So, um, so now the line looks like this. Got something like this. And you can see that, so you look behind you, and every single boat's right here yeah. banging, banging the line. You know that there's something in this. Same thing we see all the boats down here. What happened? Did I not set a good line? Could it happen? Did the wind shift? Probably. You know, that's when you start talking general recalls and things like that. So we're, uh, kind of a working mistake is having the weather mark right off the bow. When we have general recalls, it's always the first one's always my fault. I didn't do something. I had a wind shift. I don't have a square line. You know, it's favored over here, it's favored up this way. Uh, I don't have the line long enough. I give them both enough room to maneuver at the line. It's always my fault. So I, I said, fine. I'm gonna, I look at the length of the line. I look at the weather. I need weather mark set. Where are you? Get up that way. We need to move this mark a little bit like this. Adjust you. Know, go like this a little bit. We've had a wind shift. You know, so, so we've got to move the course this way. The second general recall in a row, now I'm starting to get mad. I said, okay, I don't think it's my fault this time. You're being overly aggressive. And there's ways I can discourage that with flags and that sort of thing. And that'll be the next discussion. But we're not going to get into that. We're just looking at the set the course. So this is how I do it, given our small, I mean, from, from here to here, it's maybe, what, half mile, six tenths of a mile. It's not very far. And one of the things you worry, worry about with fish with big boats, if this isn't far enough, I mean, if it was something like this, I mean, I'd have this right on the ICW, and I'd be backed up, backed up right to this thing here. You know, just, just the best I could do to give us the most weather leg and that sort of thing. So we're, we're, we're a little bit challenged here. That's why we've got to be creative here. Yes? Okay, I'm totally guilty of making a early mistake. I'm never, not usually in charge of setting the line, but. Well, you're you're looking at you're looking off wind to see what the wind direction is, but the wind direction, you know, if it's if it's pick a number, it's the same thing all the way down the course. Mm -hmm. So uh, two ninety here, it's still two ninety down here. You know, the wind's going this way, so you don't have to be right on your boat. So you so you pick the you get your good number, and then you help you have a good mark set boat. We house it gets it in the middle of the line. So that's why sometimes we set this line. So if I know it's 290, if I know it's 290, less than 80 is a, one, a two, uh, 200. So I set this thing at 200, and then we can set this thing if it's a longer, longer course. So that's why I got the back and say, sometimes we set this first if it's not a very long distance. If it is a long distance, sometimes I set this first. I give them a back bearing, and I tell them to look at the line and put it in the middle. Which did, uh, Art is just one of the best marks that guys did, Larry Etheridge, just do such a great job. So I'll give him a back bearing, whatever that is. What's the back bearing, Pat? I'll tell you right now. So I get my little thing out here, 290. This is 200, back bearing of 110. So they'd be up here, this, they'd be this way, and they're coming down in the middle, and they're, and they're looking, so when the compass hits 110, they know that they're straight downwind from me, and we're looking for this, and then that one will set that mark somewhere in between there. Now, if it's a little bit off this way, or a little bit off this way, you know, as you all know, when the fleet takes off, it's not better to see, you know, three boats this way and three boats this way, because you know you've got a pretty pretty good line. You hate to see all six boats going this way, because you know that one end is going to be obviously the favorite, and you've not done a good job. So that's my thinking. When we have a anything west, it forces me to put another mark in, but that's not that hard to do. What you want to make sure is you have a good weather leg 
You want to make sure you try to get some downward work, some reaching work, two other legs in. And if you're going this way, we're going to put in two marks. We're going back this way. We're using our friend Green 7. We're using our buddy Green 7. So whatever they do, the last mark is always around 7, beating your way into finish. There's other ways to do it. There's other ways to do it, I'm sure. You could forget seven and put your own one. You know, put your own, you can head the whole course up this way if you want. Or down here, whatever you want to do. I like seven because it's there all the time. <laughs> when you run into it, it's funny to watch people do it. So perf is an inexact science here on our, in our, in our sailing waters. What I try to do is I try to make sure I have a real good weather leg. I try to make sure I have a real square line. I try to make an interesting course so they're getting all the points of sail. And then I start them and I let them, everything else decided on the race course. We've done, as a race committee, we've done our job. We've set a good course, we've set a good weather mark, we set a good line, we get them off and we'll show you the next, next one, we, all the thinking and getting the boats off. But that's my thinking on, per, on PHR efforts. And that's what we've been doing for a long time, and it's worked out pretty well. One design is its own little thing, of course, like I said. One design is uh, we got the start line, just whatever weather is, whatever weather is. You've got a weather mark, you've got a lure mark. It's not kind of scale, of course, but that's always we're going to weather, back to lure. Now, some people in the old days, we used to put the lure mark behind us. Which is all right because there's a little beat from the bag and they finish up with. I like to have the cores in front of me. So everything I'm seeing is in front of me. When you're PRO and you're sitting in front of me, you're the field general. I like the battle in front of me. So one design thing, we got a breezy day, okay, and we'll put a reaching mark over here. Something like that. So it's the weather, reach, reach. You know, so so we got options there. Here's our start line. We took another look at that southeast wind again. And that southeast wind, let's say you you wanted you wanted to keep your marks to port and or just have a longer course. Arthur, first of all, before I answer your question, that's a great point. Is that I a lot of times I try to make all the marks to starboard or all the marks to port, but sometimes you just can't, especially with seven. So there might be it might be weather to port, nine to port, eight to port. When you're coming this way, seven has to be to starboard. Because you can't come. Remember that one time I did that, Dave? And it was eating oh, my ass out of the bar. They come back to port, they're coming right back into the fleet. So when I do this thing, some marks are to starboard, some marks are to port. I might have a course like this it'd be start, start, weather, uh, you know, nine to port. Uh, Eight to four, six to four, seven to start, finish. So you know, I'm just making it up. So you know, this I have this to port, I have this to port, I have this to port, I have this to start, and finish. Hmm? So you don't have to have all the marks going in one direction if you make sure it's clear. Describe the string. Describe the, the string. The, the string can't overlap. <coughs> you can't cross a string. The, the oh. course has to be set within a. You probably do a better job explaining that than I would. I don't use I don't use that. But. Okay. So not all marks are the starter, and not, but what I like to do right. sometimes for race one, I'll do all marks of store uh, port, and for race two, I do all marks of starter. Mm -hmm. so just kind of keep it right, just to keep it fun, keep it interesting, it's supposed to be having fun. <laughs> or if I'm in a bad mood, then I ruin something. Or I'm going over, or whatever the story is there. And, and what else. So, okay, I'm getting back to your southeast thing. Yeah. Question. So, so if you want, you want to this, your southeast course, and you're going to weather, which is down near B. So, because you, and you want to stretch the course out, might you take the next leg to, uh, to, to six, R6, all the way across the river? You could. So you could. But that, would that be enough of a downwind? If you held a downwind leg. Okay. Now, if you held a tailwind, you get in with the uh, cruisers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, the other side of the boat. Okay. And, and you, you have a downwind. You certainly can do that. 
You can do this, so what he's saying is uh, we get a southeast breeze. We've got the line here, something like this. See what I'm trying to do Southeast is down here. Well, so we're going to go start. Weather. We come all the way back up here to six. Sure. Seven. Yeah. Okay. B. Back to seven. Finish. Sure. Okay, it would be enough. Yeah. Just okay. over the shoulder. It gives you a lot of flexibility. So the, out distances. Well, we use time on time, so we don't know, need to know the distances. Our, our computer program uses time on time, not time on distance. So the distance is moot. Is it right? I don't know. <laughs> With USA, you'll never see this in USA. In any publication they have, you'll never see this way to set up a course. But given the limitations we have here and the natural assets that we also have here. So every race is different. We never said, I never have the same race twice. Now, if, a nice, if it's a nice course, the wind steady, the 40 minute race, we'll just do it again. Just do it again. We got, we got a good setup here. And we'll just do it again. Perfect is a little bit behind. I'll add a, add a leg, maybe two quick leg. You know, I love to go so seven over to eight, back to seven. And that and let, let these guys just finish. The bees finish. A's just another upwind, get straight across, and spin it around as fast as heck. It only adds 15, 10 minutes to, to the course. So, again, there's no way, you know, you're, you're, I don't want to say you're swagging. Jim, what, what's a good word we should use? We're, just, we're trying to be uh, thoughtful about it, making sure we have the right number of weather legs and reaching legs and downwind legs. But uh, a lot of that we're just deciding out there. I hate to say that. Uh, when I'm at the skipper's meeting and I put the course up there, I'm not even out on the water yet, but I know generally from my weather work prior to there, and sometimes I've set an hour out, an hour, 40 minutes before the skipper's meeting, when do you see the weather out there? I see 135. Now I know, because I'm putting this to weather, it's 125 or 140, it doesn't matter, because I'm going to stick it to weather when I get out there, but it tells me generally where it is, so I can start generally making the course settings. So at the skipper's meeting, I'll have the course at the bottom, five or six legs, we are going to port starboard, so it will also be on the committee boat. In between uh, races, make sure you don't get too far away from the committee boat. You hear one horn and flag Lima come up, which means come with hail. There's something that the race committee wants to tell the fleet. Generally, they were changing course somehow. And make sure you come. If you don't, you do it at your own peril. Now, I'm talking on the radio all the time, as everyone knows. We change that. I'm going to make sure I get your pens and paper ready. We're going to change the course for perf A, or we're changing the course for perf B. Perf A, you're going to say the same, or whatever it is. Make it simple. Any questions come by, ask me. I've got a thing on the boat. You can't ask any, any of the race committee. They're not allowed to answer questions. Only, only I answer questions when I'm there because I don't want a wrong answer given, which is commonplace. It's nothing being hard to ask. But uh, we'll answer any questions you all have. Thank you. So we saw windward lures pretty easy compared to first. <laughs> this weather, nice weather lake. Lure leg, finish downwind or finish upwind, depending on how we're doing that. But you can you manipulate all the marks. You're manipulating all the marks. When you're doing perf, this is six, this is six, this is six, that's six. The only variable is the weather mark. And these start finish conditions. Unless we're going this direction. You know, then we're, we're manipulating these, this, and, and the start. But one, one chosen, we're always going to be going hard to weather. Cat, 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 cat. We're not going, we're, and then we're always going to be coming around and going hard to weather to finish. And it's amazing how many folks get passed and not passed in this little lake right here. It's really an important part of the course. They'll separate, they'll separate, cover. It's, it's, it's one of the you know, 20 boat lakes, the most fun 20 boat lakes on the course. Well, I hate to. Give away my secrets, how simple this is. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah. how, we swag, how we swag this on the, on the boat ourselves instead of uh, something uh, complex and uh, uh, no, free right. no, free no free thinking. No free thinking. No free thinking. We'll get into that the next time. Are there any more questions? No, no questions either. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is not over yet, meaning the race committee sessions. Even though I said it could be over, it's not over yet. We're, we'll take a break uh, for the rest of this month. 
you'll be hearing from me again early uh, January. We're probably getting into things like scoring and um, what the scorers like to see is, and from reporters. And uh, so we're going to do actually running races where you went back to that one. So, so, so they'll, be, they'll, be, they'll be followed. I really appreciate your interest. And uh, one last thing, Art, when you're there. Yeah. As a postscript, our Commodore has a few comments. When you're there. Like, just one more thing. I'm going to let that comment pass about the waking up the weather mark. <laughs> 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 it's okay. There's nothing personal. Nothing personal. Okay. Uh, Bill, did you have something? Yeah, I did. Just one, uh, two real quick things. One, it turns out uh, having this August body of sailors here is good because um, Saturday and Sunday we have an adult class going on, and we actually need someone to drive a chase boat. It'll be from 9 to noon in the morning, um, and then back in by, by noon. Uh, Steve said he might be able to handle Saturday, so if someone would want to pick up on Sunday, that would be awesome. That's the business. The pleasure is, um, I've wanted for a while, old-fashioned, I like uh, handwritten notes as a, a thank you gesture. Uh, I asked our secretary to come up with some uh, note cards that I could do that with. She did, and the very first one I did, I wrote, Karen, all of NYC wishes you bon voyage and looks forward to your return. Sincerely. Thank you. So she's leaving on tomorrow. Tomorrow. She's been packing for seven and a half months, so I don't know. And you have a problem. But she's leaving on tomorrow. Alright, comment for the first round of the bar.